but by understanding the importance of social psychology, which you would have definitely learned, right? Uh, so that's importance of so social psychology in business. We can see that in uh, advertisements that take that as a theme. And again, salespeople have used psychological principles to increase their sales as well as customer satisfaction. This has been happening for decades. Uh, one serial entrepreneur, uh, Ryan Hondi, he's from uh, Ireland, Northern Ireland. Uh, he was asked to state the importance of psychology in business. And so this is what he said. Uh, if you want to sell it, uh, he means uh, product or service. Okay? So if you want to sell something, they have to feel it. They means customers. Uh, modern psychological and behavioral science studies have made it you know, uh, obviously abandonedly clear that emotions and instincts drive our decisions. Although we consider ourselves to be rational beings, uh, particularly in business, how we make our decisions consciously or unconsciously will often come down to how we feel. This is why the you know, biggest companies, take any company for that matter in this planet, uh, you can see that they are uh, pumping in uh, billions of dollars uh, into advertising campaigns that don't you know, necessarily showcase their uh, product's full capacity or capability. Uh, instead, what they focus on is evoking emotions in their audience. Uh, hence, all of you out there uh, who are trying to figure out uh, whether I'm fit for a business venture or can I too become an entrepreneur? Uh, well, definitely. Let me tell you, you too can make it big one day. Uh, so that is what I feel about you know, the uh, importance of psychology in business. Uh, well, we'll go to uh, the next slide. I hope this is uh, visible to you. And at least some of, if not everyone, uh, at least some of these faces are very familiar to you. Uh, and some of them you would have even seen you know, directly. Uh, can anyone just unmute your mic uh, and respond? Mm -hmm the names of a few uh, who you can identify i know it is uh, uh, noon time and uh, all of you have not had your lunch i had checked with the Jishana before the session had started uh, i understand that so i will not be taking much of your time i just limit to whatever time is assigned to me can anyone identify some of these faces at least a very familiar you know figures from our own place can anyone Am I audible? Ma'am, Gina Kanan. Yeah, thank you, Mekna Leslie. Uh, Mekna, thank you for responding. Uh, were you able to identify any other? Uh, Yusuf Ali. Yeah. Some of you would have even visited, uh, you know, uh, one of these personalities, business venture, Milan Designs. Shali Rajmol. Exactly. Yes, very good. So that is Tara who responded, right? You are exactly right. Okay. So we, I have, you know, uh, this list is not exhaustive. You know, you have uh, so many, you know, successful entrepreneurs. Whatever I could get at the last minute from, you know, Google Images. So thanks to Google Images for these, you know, uh, faces. So I just uh, picked up uh, a few from uh, Google, and I had just put up. So why I uh, have uh, put these, you know, famous personalities? Here for you, uh, some of uh, them you already know, you know, uh, these are entrepreneurs who have become successful because they could find a solution to a problem and achieve the product market fit. And that is exactly our topic today is, you know, which means for the success of any business, it is imperative that you hit the target of getting your product or service fit the market. No matter, you know, no matter the business is big or small, some of these people are running, you know, trillion dollar companies and uh, some of them are running companies which are worth uh, crores of turnover. Okay? So the only difference is in the scale. At the end of the day, business is business. And you need to understand the importance of problem solution and product market fit, which is our point of discussion. Okay? So before I get into our uh, topic, let me just give you uh, a bit of business, uh, you know, uh, fundamentals okay uh, 
okay so uh, before i move on to our topic i would like to give you just a few uh, you know terms right okay so, so you would have heard of uh, what a uh, non entrepreneur is or who a customer is then how will you reach your customer so uh, i hope you know these terms uh, uh, i'm not you know um, underestimating your understanding okay so entrepreneurs means they find new solutions to problem uh, they uh, create innovations and try to turn the innovations into businesses okay so for a startup to move from a problem to a solution fit or a product market fit you have to figure out uh, the fundamentals of your business that is say customer so uh, most early stage startups uh, fail because they can't find their customers to achieve this fit you know a startup has to know who their customers are the more precisely you can define your customers the better it's also important to define the entry market you know the customer can serve best in the beginning to reach the product market fit Uh, and for a B two B startup, B two B means business to business. Okay, so certain businesses are there that caters to other businesses. Okay, so uh, you should also be very well sketching who your customers are. Okay, and how will you reach your customers? Whether it is through uh, you know offline or online mode, or uh, is it through you know social media uh, campaigns or promotions? So how will you get to your customer? How will you convey your message to your customer? That has to be clear. Then. Uh, about market and competition based on who your customers are a startup can define what market they are in it is you know it is important for you to define um, a small market entry market at first so you should be clear about what your market is and you should be knowing the uh, pros and cons you know the um, you know, the uh, strength and weakness of your competitors as well the next term i would like to you know mention is value proposition Okay, startups uh, solve problems for their customers, uh, but if your you know your solution produces value and uh, someone pays for it, then you have created value for your product. Okay, that means the value proposition should should summarize the produced value. Okay, so um, uh, the situation is often more complicated if the customer is probably already solving that particular problem in some other way. Okay, so you should be coming out with uh, a solution. which should have more value that they see and that when they compare it with something else uh, that is already there so they should be able to uh, feel the difference okay uh, so that is value proposition and usp is unique selling proposition so what is it that uh, you can highlight as uh, uh, your product's uh, peculiarity that is usp then uh, business model is all about how you run your business how you make money Uh, so that is a business model so i just wanted to touch upon these terms because uh, while we move through our uh, topic of today's uh, discussion i might be using these terms uh, quite often so that is why i thought i'll give you uh, a, a pinch of um, business fundamentals as well okay so well so now i have this question why should we care about problem solution fit so that is the first part of our topic of discussion today why should we care about a uh, problem solution fit well um steve jobs you know of apple uh, he has stated that it is not your customer's job to know what they want steve jobs was not implying that you should not engage with your customers uh, in fact that is not the point at all he was implying that uh, it is not your customer's job to design the product you are in charge of that your customer can tell you what your Uh, you know what problem they have but they cannot design the final product right uh, so um, henry ford once said uh, if i had asked people what they wanted they would have uh, said i need a faster horse horse okay so people were not used to cars so people could, could not even think of a car uh, so they would have said i want a faster horse or i want a faster uh, bullock car okay so they would have never said they need a car so uh, the biggest risk for a startup is uh, building something that no one wants and how they can be successful is to identify a problem and bring the right solution say if you uh, take another example you all of you have heard of tata nano right tata nano car okay so that is a brilliant concept they had introduced to the market okay so and uh, they positioned it as the 1 um, lakh car in fact 
their positioning was like the cheapest car, cheapest car, okay, which the poor can afford. So that is the message that they were trying to convey. They had a problem. They saw the problem in the market. They had the solution, but they were too focused on the solution rather than the problem and rather than understanding the market. So why did they fail in the market? They brought a good uh, product. But why did they fail? If they had positioned it as the cutest family car, I repeat, the cutest family car, instead of saying the cheapest car, it was actually not very cheap, actually. You know, uh, In fact, uh, on road price of some high end uh, models would have been around uh, three to four lakhs. And again, um, this particular car was having um, uh, best, you know, best in class facilities, and it was far better than. Uh, the then um, three to four lakh price to cars at that point of time. So in fact, uh, that is where they failed. They knew the market, as in they knew the problem, and they brought a solution. And they were too focused on the solution that they did not understand the market. That is where they could not um, get a right product market fit. They were able to get a problem solution fit. So I repeat, they were able to get a problem solution fit, but they did not get a product market fit about which we will uh, you know, see as the uh, session uh, progresses okay so uh, how google lens failed is another classic example uh, in this case okay I, I i not google lens actually google glasses okay so if you have not uh, heard about google glasses maybe after the session i want some of you at least to just google and find out what is a google glass okay that was also a brilliant product but uh, you know the timing or perhaps uh, the market did not uh, want it or market was not ready to accept that product at that point of time so they did not also get the fit right um, well um, that is about this uh, problem solution uh, fit and i hope you are able to uh, get it right i hope you are able to understand what this problem solution fit is that is uh, as an entrepreneur you should be able to state the problem clearly you should be able to bring the right solution and in the next stage, it is the product market fit. Okay, so now that you know why a startup needs a problem solution fit, uh, we can dive into understanding what it is. Okay, for this, you will need to ask yourself three questions basically Is this required? That is, is the solution actually required? Do customers really need this? Say, for example, after me graduating or post graduating out of my psychology course, uh, I am planning to start uh, a company that caters to the uh, psychological needs of uh, customers. Say for example, I'm planning to design an application. Okay, So I'm planning to design an application, uh, say, uh, I might think of customers like say women, or maybe the youth, or maybe, um, um, you know, senior citizens. So I should be able to clearly state who my customer is, right? So uh, are these going to be women, or are these going to be the youth, or are these going to be the senior citizen? Uh, so I should be able to identify what if there is a problem. Okay. So if I'm planning to come out with a, um, an application that will help people reduce their stress, or maybe uh, give counseling, or maybe um, you know to take care of the depression. You know, so people a lot of people are undergoing depression. So uh, is this required? Is there a problem actually? So you should be uh, knowing whether there is a problem. Okay. And do customers really need this? So. What if I bring out, uh, you know, there are, in fact, there are applications like you know, Inner Hour and Mini More. Okay? So what if I bring out uh, an application that will help people, you know, handle their depression? So do customers really need this? There was one, I mean, there is, okay, not there was, there is one company, Electrotherm. Okay? They make large metal furnaces and other things. So they had come up with around, uh, in 2004, they launched um, Yo Bikes. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard your bikes okay well that is based on uh, you know electric charging electric bikes okay so now uh, people are mm, mm, very much um, behind uh, electric scooters or electric bikes and electric cars but then back then years back people were not ready to receive it so your bikes then were not a success but now if you launch it it would definitely be another thing that you have to ask is is it viable is it uh, is it going to work and will they pay for it? Are my customers ready to pay for this product or service? And is it feasible? Will I be able to make it? 
and uh, can I build it? So these are the questions that you have to ask yourself. Often, what happens is start up, uh, you know, start backwards. They will start by asking themselves if it is, uh, you know, possible for us to build instead of uh, asking uh, is it actually required for the customer. Okay. So asking if it is feasible may have worked better during the manufacturing era, but it is now not the manufacturing era right now. It is a customer's era now. Now you need to make sure that you are solving a real problem. And people will pay for your solution before you begin your mass production. Uh, the saying like, if you build it, they will come is not you know, necessarily applicable. Uh, so with that, I'll take you to a customer development approach. Okay, So these are some of the steps that uh, we need to follow as entrepreneurs um, right from customer discovery to company building. Okay? So the customer discovery is where you achieve your problem solution fit and you have a brilliant idea, you have a prototype, and now you need to validate it. Okay, that is the next stage, validation. That is, you have to check with your customers whether this is what they wanted. Okay, so that is where you can achieve your product market fit. And the next stage would be customer creation, and finally, uh, scaling it up. That is company building. Okay, so these are the essential uh, four stages. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, Mrs. T. Blank had uh, put forward outlining the four stages. Uh, it is a customer development process. It is an iteration loop, in fact, uh, starting with uh, discovery to building, company building. So customer discovery, in fact, it is uh, uh, trying to determine who your customers are, whether uh, the problem you are solving is important to them. Uh, and you have to spend a lot of time conducting primary research. So I hope you know what is a primary research, right? So uh, I'm sure you, uh, you have a paper on research too, right? So where uh, you can conduct surveys or interviews or focus groups interviews, then follow, you can follow it up with uh, secondary research as well. For example, in the case of uh, Uber, you know about the uh, Uber, right? So Travis Kalanick, so he decided to build a business model as a private uh, cab service for himself. Okay. And gradually as the service was shared with friends, they began to realize the demand from others. So uh, he understood that. Is able to discover customers, okay, and then finally validation. Soon after discovery, you have validation. That is when you build a sales process that can be repeated by your sales and marketing team. The process is validated by selling the product to early customers for money. Uh, in the case of Uber, um, customers were paying for the ride from, uh, uh, you know, from the initial point, and hence the business model was validated. You know, they were willing to pay, okay. And uh, for uh, Facebook, you know about Facebook, right? Now, Meta, yeah, in its early days, Mark Zuckerberg was selling banners to local college businesses as a proof. As a proof. And then uh, his monetization model uh, also worked. And the next stage is customer creation, that is getting new customers. So th this stage, you are trying to seek to increase demand for your product and scale up your business. So uh, if you take the case of Uber, uh, you had a business uh, referral program. Okay? So they had a, a, a referral bonus program uh, with right subsidies, uh, and uh, this you know started creating customers like anything. Uh, the next stage is uh, company creation or customer building. That is when uh, a company transitions to a more formalized structure where different specialized departments are created uh, to specialize functions like sales, marketing, and business development. So uh, these are the essential four stages of uh, customer building process. Uh, in fact, customers don't care about your solution. They care about their problems. Okay. So uh, we have to keep that in mind as, uh, you know, uh, uh, entrepreneurs or this. And see, uh, all of you may not, you know, end up becoming an entrepreneur. Some of you might become part of some company or some startup. And I would say, you know, you should at least, you know, work for a startup because uh, or, you know, start uh, venturing a business. Let it fail. It is okay, you know. And uh, most of the entrepreneurs who have had uh, experience with the senior entrepreneurship, they say uh, the probability of failing is uh, very high than probably of becoming a success initially. So it is okay to fail. You know why? You know, people like multitaskers. People, uh, you know, like risk takers. Uh, people like, uh, you know, enterprising people. And why I say people like all these characters is because this will definitely add value to your resume. So if you have ventured into a business, let it be small or big or whatever. So if you have ventured into a business or uh, if you have worked for a startup for that matter, you know, 
you will be seen as a person who can take risks right uh, so that will definitely add value to your resume okay so the customer discovery stage which we were looking at uh, that uh, ends with the problem solution fit and a minimum viable product okay during customer validation you validate your uh, product by attempting to sell it and nothing speaks clearer than a sale if you have done if you have made your sale then that is enough okay successful iteration iteration means you have to go through these stages repeatedly if required and uh, you know you may think uh, uh, so this is fine. okay so you may think you have created the next alexa or whatsapp uh, but uh, unless you have developed your product with market fit in mind you could end up with uh, google glasses okay so that is uh, these days you cannot leave with uh, whatsapp okay so you feel uncomfortable not using uh, whatsapp and people who are used to you know ola or uber or oyo rooms uh, they are in fact addicted to um, what do you say uh, the convenience, you know. Uh, so, if you have had availed Zomato or Ziggy or, for that matter, any of these app services, uh, you are in fact addicted to their convenience, and uh, you feel uncomfortable if you are not using it, or you are very happy using it. Uh, same is the case with you know Alexa or WhatsApp. But then, uh, though Google Glass is a brilliant product, uh, probably some of you would not have even heard about it. Okay, so that is where they failed. Now, what if a business doesn't achieve product or market fit? So from problem solution fit, now we are migrating to product market fit. So according to uh, Paul Graham, uh, he's a computer scientist and entrepreneur, the most common mistake startups make is trying to solve problems that no one has. If a company is trying to solve unexisting problems or offering poor products not suitable for the market, what will happen? It will eventually fail. So just because you have a brilliant idea, uh, it is not necessarily going to be a hit in the market because you should know whether it is actually needed by the market. As simple as that. Companies that don't find a product market fit, what would happen? They would, uh, you know, find customers who don't understand the value of the product. Okay, then uh, you don't see any significant uh, increase in the number of sales. Uh, you will see no repeated sales. Uh, then there would not be any, you know, word of mouth, and you will be seeing too long sales cycles and difficulty in getting the word out and attracting media attention in certain cases you know certain products or services after people having availed that they immediately post it on facebook or any other social media or instagram okay so they would start they would start becoming advocates of your product without you even uh, you know spending a penny okay so uh, if the product market fit is achieved what happens is you can see the product disappearing from your shelves as soon as they are launched and you start getting more inquiries for your product or service and you know what will the media do reporters will not be able to wait they can't wait to write about your company in the media and there are a lot of repeated purchases that is what happens when you achieve a product market fit okay and you will have a big you know community of brand ambassadors and you know so high demand that's what happens in fact let me tell you uh, about zomato Zomato is making a loss of, do you know that Zomato is making a loss of around rupees 4,600 crore last year. They are making loss, but the company got valued at more than rupees 70,000 crore, more than 70,000 crores. What is the reason? That is because of their reach. Their reach, the, the number of orders that they are able to get in a year, the number of orders that they are able to get in a year is so huge. And uh, people who have availed their services is addicted to the convenience. As I, uh, a few minutes back, I stated, right? Customers get addicted to their services. Convenience is what matters for people, right? You can uh, sit uh, relaxed at your, you know, comfort of your homes, and uh, you get the convenience of getting things delivered. Okay. So though Zomato is getting uh, into losses, but uh, you know, people are making investments. They are getting, you know, a lot of investments. Why? Because their investors know that on a particular day when Zomato is able to increase the price, okay, that they can easily do any day, any day, okay. So the thousands or lakhs or crores of orders that they are getting every year with a price rise, they will eventually get into profit immediately, okay. So immediately they will get into a profit, okay. So that that is what their investors 
no and that is why they are getting huge investments okay so with that i'll take you to what exactly is product market fit okay so the product market fit uh, pmf uh, in short it is known as this is a concept which that was developed and coined by uh, mr andy ratliff okay and some of the you know writing say it is by anderson but anderson in fact uh, came out with a modified version of product market fit but in, initially it was coined by andy ratliff so this is when your customers start loving your product to put it very simple this is when your customers start loving your product okay i'll just pause for a while and uh, are you still with me i hope i have not lost connection uh, because i was not asking you any questions because of the time frame just one hour and i had to complete a you know very big topic so i was not interacting with you so uh, can someone unmute and tell me whether i am still with you i am audible whether you are able to follow yes ma'am we are able to follow okay thank you nivya okay so um, that is when you that is product market fit is when your customers start loving your product you don't have you don't have to convince your people uh, to try your product because they already believe uh, it is helping them okay for example uh, whatsapp okay whatsapp uh, a free alternative to texting when the active was active it was expensive and you know inconvenient so see uh, answer is very clear the application is now having billions of users worldwide okay so uh, your customers have become your sales people actually right so even if whatsapp start uh, charging you nominally that is nominally in the sense uh, they have not started charging but uh, for you know except for uh, other purposes business purposes but what if they start charging you on a particular day i wouldn't say that uh, every other customer of whatsapp will quit immediately okay right now it is provided for free and it is a free alternative and they are having billions of users okay so they did not have to give any kind of promotion okay without any advertisement without any promotion without anything else word of mouth was just enough for them to grow their customer base right okay so that is why we say product market fit is that magical moment when existing users recognize your product's value and your customers start telling others uh, how great experience you are having with you know your product and your company will be able to replicate this excellent experience with other products also okay so this is likely every business end goal final goal to provide enough value to customers that they become your advocates and your customer base which is grows like that okay so that is what is uh, 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 product uh, market fit uh, in simple terms is so if you can look at this why is product market fit required now can someone unmute yourself and tell me what you understand from this graph so you have been listening to problem solution fit and product market fit this graph is self explanatory so just want you to be convinced this is actually this is uh, the end result of a survey that was done uh, extensively among uh, uh, you know customers as well as you know entrepreneurs so what is it that you see here can someone uh, in, in in one sentence can someone uh, tell me what you understand from this graph i hope it is visible can you connect it with uh, whatever we have been uh, you know looking so far i have 117 participants right now including our uh, including myself our faculty members so i want one of the students to unmute yourself and tell me what you see in this graph what is it that Uh, strikes you any one of you other than mekhana and nivya who have already responded and tara had also responded somebody else is shruti dino the student yes ma'am okay so he are you there doesn't matter anybody else 
what do you see as the prominent reason the the the, the one major reason for uh, product market fit you know uh, or uh, the uh, reason for startup failure it is very much evident I will continue only when someone responds. Somebody other than Tara, Mehana, and Nidia. So, students, please respond. Uh, ma'am, ma'am, the top reasons uh, for startup fail, and the uh, first reason is no market need that the product doesn't. Uh, product is not required to the customers. Okay. Exactly, you are right. And how do we connect it with uh, the problem solution fit and product market fit that we have been, you know, uh, looking at so far? The top reason is there is no market need, right? So, so far, what we have been looking at is, uh, as an entrepreneur or as as a business person, we should be coming out with a solution or a product only if there is a need right only if there is a problem okay so that is what i wanted you to be convinced of okay so this is exactly what the study says okay thank you for responding so this is how we connect this research result to what we have been looking at so far that is uh, only if there is a problem your solution is relevant to the market only if there is a problem your product will fit right to the market okay so that is what i wanted to convey through this particular uh, you know, graph okay so most of the entrepreneurs must have the wisdom to not fall in love with their idea okay most of the time what happens is uh, you as an entrepreneur would say that yes i love my product okay i have my uh, idea which is brilliant which is validated by most of my colleagues and uh, you know people have started praising about my idea but then you should never fall in love with your idea, but you have to validate whether the, there is a real problem worth solving. You know? Having more passion for the solution than the problem. Okay, I repeat, having more passion for your solution than the problem is actually a problem. Okay, so uh, of the most frequently cited reasons for startup failures, no market need is the top reason. So I would like to reiterate that again. Okay, so. Uh, now let's see the steps okay the steps to identify and test your product market fit so so far what i've been trying to tell you is how you achieve your problem solution fit then what is product market fit and now it is time for us to look at the steps to identify and test a product market fit okay so the uh, most uh, you know, obvious or uh, tangible way to uh, assess your product market fit and understand how consumers view your product is by sending them surveys or ask them. Okay, so how do you normally, how do big businesses ask people right now? If not directly, but that is through surveys, right? So all of you know about surveys and the different type of survey modes, right? Uh, you can have a questionnaire administered, uh, the offline surveys. You have a lot of uh, survey, online survey platforms these days. Then uh, uh, you can conduct surveys through Facebook pages, right? Even Insta, Insta provides you these days with uh, you know connecting uh, surveys. Okay, so the question in these surveys should be pointed, and you have to ask your customers if they think your product is a must-have, and if they would miss if it is were gone. You should be clearly asking them: Do they consider this product as a must-have, and if they don't get it, they would miss it? Okay. So probably uh, people who are listening to me right now, you can actually think about certain products or services right now in your mind. What are those products uh, uh, which you would definitely uh, uh, miss if you are not using it? Okay, uh, Or uh, you, if you think that that is a must have, uh, say take uh, any product for that matter, any FMC or any electronic gadget or any service for that matter. Okay, So the uh, there is a 40 percentage rule that says, uh, once a survey is done, and if uh, your customers are stating that, at least 40% of your customers are stating that, they would be very disappointed if they no longer have access to your product or service. Okay. 
uh, and they consider it as a must have then you can say you have created a product market fit that is on a particular day google search engine is gone well you have a lot of other options here okay you have a lot of other so, uh, search engines okay it is not just provided by google but you have other options also but on a particular day if you don't see google search engine how would you feel on a particular day if you are not uh, getting the service of uh, uh, say whatsapp or facebook or on a particular day you are not having access to amazon prime or netflix or on a particular day you are not having access to any of your uh, uh, you know online delivery services whatever you may think of okay will you feel disappointed or do you feel that was a must have then you can say that the company had achieved product market fit as simple as that okay so now how to identify whether as a startup okay uh, or um, even if you have scaled up if you want to find out whether you have uh, you know achieved this it all starts with uh, uh, you know finding out your target customer so identify who you are trying to create value for what are their pain points and what do you want to address okay further uh, you will have to address their underserved needs what are the needs that are not uh, you know, served so far okay and with whatsapp you know they were clear about it customers had data oh, all of us had data in our phone and uh, people were frustrated that they had to pay separately for call for texting for sending uh, pictures that was not even possible right okay so then for calling on for texting i have to pay separately i have lot of data in my phone and with the high end phones i am having too much of data accumulating so there was no option for me to share it right so whatsapp was very clear so they knew the pain point sometimes you know you need to determine the need yourself uh people may not be able to articulate it people no, not even you know people are not even able to um, tell you if there is a problem you know as rightly mentioned in your brochure you know in fact uh, what you had written in your uh, you know i liked it you know that flyer that you had prepared true innovation is coming up with a product that the customer didn't even know uh, that they needed okay so it was very apt you have included that okay so uh, most of the time uh, customers may not be able to articulate but you know you have to foretell you have to forecast yes this going to be a need only thing is that you need to validate it with your customers okay so to determine the best way to um, meet customer needs there are a lot of tools available uh, probably um, i don't know whether you have heard of cano model is one then quality function deployment uh, house of quality that is getting to know your voice of customers okay so cano model q of d there are tools which can actually be used to identify uh, what your customers actually consider important okay so if i uh, get into explaining those tools that will take a lot of time so i'm not venturing into that so cano model q of d these are certain tools to understand your customer needs now um, next is to understand the value proposition okay so you have to define benefits you have to define okay define your benefits uh, that the product is able to offer and you'll have to promise customers and how you will address their needs better than their competition okay so um, next is functionality that is where your minimum viable product mvp comes in okay you don't want to over scope the functionality you don't want to build a, a product with a lot of functionality which you can do at a later stage Uh, you have to head into the right direction define the minimum functionality that is minimum features that you can offer in the product and satisfy the market so that is the uh, uh, it's all about mvp or functionality okay and finally uh, you can see that you arrive at the final product okay so finally the user experience is what you need to understand that is you need to take advantage of the features and get benefits your value proposition has to offer so um, you have to get the user experience and feedback okay so that is how you in fact uh, achieve the uh, product market fit that is how you identify and test whether you have attained the fit that you exactly need so uh, as you can see in this particular slide you know viability desirability and feasibility okay so um, it is uh, mentioned here what is viability that is a business model that can make the company real money okay is it viable for me to run the business and desirability you know large market of people who really need are the people 
uh, desiring uh, for a product like this there is actual desirability and then the feasibility that whether you will be able to build it so uh, if you want to build a very good product will you be able to build it in a cost effective manner okay what is cost effective manner you cannot uh, build a product which will run run at a loss okay so will you be able to uh, uh, meet that cost effective uh, ceiling okay so if all these three of the elements are not well identified or assessed or controlled you can't reach your product market fit okay so if desirability is weak not many people uh, will want um, what you can make and believe you can sell so if desirability is weak what will happen is it will be a waste okay if feasibility is weak uh, what do you mean if feasibility is weak you are not able to build your product that is a failure okay and if the viability is weak what will happen you will not be able to make money and again you will be a failure so that is important so for so for uh, product market fit what is required is viability desirability and feasibility now uh, moving on to uh, one good example of a product market uh, fit there are a lot of examples but uh, you can think about the ola or oyo um, or uh, so what i mentioned here is about uber okay so uh, you, there are in fact a uh, lot of examples right from your apple iphone or facebook or whatsapp or Uh, any product for that matter, or any service which have been very successful in the market. Uh, if you look at Uber's case, Uber captured the product market fit by initially offering free rides. Can you believe that? Okay, initially offering free rides. So um, between you know certain uh, tech events that happened in you know San Francisco. Okay, so the the co-founders recognized that the taxi system was uh, uh, expensive initially, and people would have that you know hesitation to accept it. So there was a problem. People wanted. See, you and I would want a, a, a very good, uh, convenient mode of transportation whenever we want to go to a place, right? We would want a convenient mode of transportation. But then uh, taxi systems were uh, expensive, like in India, in US, in every part of uh, the world, it was expensive. So what they did was they performed as identify that if they could offer free rides or if they could offer uh, rides for uh, cheaper rates. Initially, they offered uh, rides for very cheap rates. and then they increase the price that was their strategy okay so that was their marketing strategy initially uh, so um, once the uber app gained steam okay so when they gained the popularity then they started you know offering 50 percentage discounts to first time users that is what they did and then um, uber's ability to solve this particular problem to create a need at the same time so they have solved the problem and they created the need also so consumers were in demanding a better taxi service but once a more convenient and simpler option emerged uh, what the users began to do was they relied on that concept okay uh, so that is how they become uh, they have become a success okay and once uh, users uh, started sharing their experience on social media then uh, there was social proof that people uh, or you you could get a validation that customers are accepting it and they have become advocates for your product Okay. So today, the uh, Uber has about you know 93 million plus uh, um, uh, riders, and the company has recorded um, more than five billion rides in 2020 actually alone. So in most cases, product market fit doesn't happen on the first try. You'll have to you know likely test, then adjust your product or service, and several times before you hit that product market fit. Okay. So you have to keep on continuously experiment, experimenting based on your feedback from your audience. Okay, so that you have to tweak your concept uh, if required, and keep on continuously changing. So, when you achieve this product market fit, your job will become much easier because your customers and others, you know, other interested parties, they will become you know significant part of your effort, marketing effort, in fact. Okay, so they will share their own stories with others. Okay, and uh, you can focus on the work of creating the same great experience for everyone who interacts with your company, and that is how you. Uh, Achieve your product market fit. So I hope I have addressed and have uh, you know given due justice to your uh, topic that is problem solution fit and product market fit. In fact, there are lot many things more to uh, uh, actually cover. Uh, in fact, uh, you can uh, use the lean business canvas model. Okay, lean business canvas model where you can prepare a, a business model. If you have an idea in mind, how to develop that? Okay, so there is a canvas. So that will take. for the more time so 
those people who are interested as a continuation you can soon after start reading about lean business canvas if you really have a good idea in mind so all the best for your entrepreneurial journey all the best for your uh, uh, future careers so thank you for your patient listening uh, thank you very much so if there is anything that you want to know or ask uh, feel free this year ma'am yes uh, sir ma'am yeah thank you so much ma'am so uh, dear students if you have any doubts if you need any kind of clarifications so you see the, the forum is open to you you can have the discussion with the uh, nizama everything has to have the right time right so i don't think this is the right time for kids to open up probably because they are starving right this year ma'am yes yes, yes ma'am <laughs> same thing applies everywhere <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay anyway it was uh, okay so uh, any any doubt. doubts students yes ma'am okay um so bindu ma'am is here i think she is not here okay so if uh, the students if you don't have any doubts uh, shall we wind up the session yes okay nizam ma'am shall we wind up the session then yes sure sure okay so elsa elsa are you there i would like to welcome elsa for word of thanks Yes, ma'am. Thank you. A very good afternoon to the esteemed speaker, Dr. Nisa James, our head of the department, Mrs. Bindu John, teachers, and all the students. It is such an honor for me to get the opportunity to thank you all. On behalf of the Psychology Department, Saint Teresa's College, I extend my gratitude to our honourable speaker, Dr. Nisa James, who is the Assistant Professor and Innovation Ambassador of Department of Management Studies, Kannur University, to take out time from a busy schedule to grace us with this webinar. Thank you, ma'am, for imparting your knowledge with us. A very special thanks goes to our head of the department, Mrs. Bindu John, who always plans something for us amidst the pandemic. Thank you, ma'am, for all the support and encouragement. Next, I would like to thank the faculty coordinator for this program, Mrs. Zisha Shaker, for taking a big role in executing this webinar. Thank you, ma'am. I extend my deepest gratitude to all the teachers who has worked for the success of this webinar. Also, I would like to extend my thanks to Ms. Nivya Sabu, IIC coordinator, for her valuable contributions. Last but not the least, this program wouldn't have been a success with you students. Thank you all for joining and making this webinar complete. Thank you. Thank you, Elsa. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for your participation, and Nizam, ma'am. Thank you so much. Yeah, ma'am. I will call you My later. Pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.